Dear church family, some of you have heard this story more times than you can remember. Preached on the same couple of verses out of it the past few times that I've preached. But tonight I want to invite you to just hear it. Hear it again like the first time. To behold the story of the gift of grace being born among us. In the gospel account of St. Luke, the second chapter. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. And this registration was first made when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in that same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord showed around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Christ, the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wandered at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, just as it was told unto them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Breath of Heaven is a beautiful song, and thank you so much for singing it so beautifully and for choir over when you came in. It was the host of heaven just breaking loose. But if you will allow me, that's not just Mary's song. And I'm not taking anything away from Mary, the Holy Mother of God. But I guarantee you, at least most of us, if not all of us sitting in this sanctuary on this Christmas Eve, have prayed a prayer at one point in time or another, God hold me together. Because I don't know how I'm going to make it through this day or through this week or through this situation. And what we celebrate tonight is the gift of grace that is born among us. The, the cross is the, is, is, paves the way for our, our, our salvation. The resurrection brings us new life. Without the resurrection, the cross would have no power. Without the cross, there would be no resurrection. But without tonight, there wouldn't be a cross or a resurrection. Because our God loves us so much that when we could not get to God, when sin had so separated us from the Father, from our Creator, God took it upon Himself. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. I very distinctly remember Christmas Eve 2018. I remember it because on Christmas Eve 2018, I was 10,752.8 miles away from my home, give or take a quarter of a mile. I was deployed. Uh, we, we'd ran some missions. Christmas Eve, I was getting ready to lead a Christmas Eve service. And it was the most disjointed Christmas Eve I think I have ever experienced. One, because I was all up in my fields. I was grieving the fact that I wasn't at home for Christmas. But also because I was daring to stand up and preach about the birth of the Prince of Peace in a place where peace was not found. 
with, with folks who had been fighting just hours before. And as I stood that Christmas Eve reading the Gospel of Luke, celebrating communion, and proclaiming goodwill towards all in that moment, you started to see the peace of Christ come even into the midst of that. I can tell you that there were many prayers prayed over those 13 months where it was, God, just hold me together. Be forever near me. Hold my, hold my guys together, God. Make sure that they've got what they need. Hold them, gracious God. Even though I know this breaks your heart. And at that Christmas Eve service, it wasn't just sailors and Marines. It wasn't just soldiers and airmen. There were local nationals. There were refugees. Because where I was was right above a place where it was really, really bad. And it was so bad that, that there would be parents who would put their children on a train to smuggle them into where we were. Because whatever life they faced there was better than what was going to happen to them if they stayed. So we've got folks from several different countries. We've got folks that spoke um, different native languages. And when we got to where we were celebrating Holy Communion, I'd work, work through the liturgy, and we started to pray the Lord's Prayer. And they started to pray the Lord's Prayer in their own language. So you heard the Lord's Prayer being prayed in English and in German and in French and in Italian because we had some of those guys with us. Best pizza I ever had in my life too, by the way. Even though I loved reminding them that they didn't invent it, they reminded me they fixed it for us. And then all of these tribal languages. And it was as close to Pentecost as I've ever gotten right there on that Christmas Eve. And in that moment, you know, I don't tell preacher stories. In that moment, when we broke the bread and shared the cup, the peace of Christ showed up right there. You see, what we celebrate tonight isn't that we've got it all together. None of us do. Some days we're better at it than others, yes? Some days everything's going pretty good. Some days you go to a family Christmas and you find out somebody has already bought you the gift that someone else had gotten for you. Some days you walk into work and you're expecting it to be a great day and you're really excited and you find out the heat doesn't work in the chapel. I'm one of the biggest nights of the year. There's a multitude of things that goes on. But God holds us together. This night proves the love and the grace of God. And the amazing thing is, is that when Christ was born as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Savior of the world, you would expect for him to be born in a temple. You would expect that the religious leaders would recognize and see the signs and understand and interpret, but that's not what happens. He's born in a stable out back. And, and the shepherds, the shepherds are the ones that come barging in, and they're the ones that, that are the first proclaimers of the gospel outside of the angels. The angels tell them, they go tell everybody. And the scriptures love the image of the shepherd. We have psalms written in tribute of the shepherd. We have other Old Testament passages that speak of the shepherd. We have New Testament passages that speak of the shepherd. Jesus Christ himself is known as the good shepherd, but here's the reality. Shepherds weren't allowed at the temple, not all the way to the court of Israel, because shepherds were ritually unclean all the time. They constantly came into contact with dead animals. They constantly could not make amends for when one little sheep wanders off and gets off of their pasture and starts nibbling grass on somebody else's pasture. How do you figure out how much you owe someone for the, the wheat that the sheep ate? This was constantly going on. And I don't know if you know this or not, and maybe I shouldn't tell you, but there's actually ancient dirty jokes that are ascribed to shepherds. They are not your sweet, fluffy people that we've made them out to be. Most of us would feel very uncomfortable around them. 
And they're out in a field keeping watch over their flock at night. That means they smell like the sheep, they smell like the campfire, they smell like the dirt and the grime that they've been around. And it's to them that the angelic host comes. It's to them who get to celebrate the very first Christmas Eve service. It's to them who couldn't even get into the temple that are invited to come face to face with God. And they were invited to come face to face with God just as they are. That invitation is still given because tonight, this very night, Christ is born anew in our hearts and our lives. The grace of God is revealed Yet again, if you've been wondering where God is in your life, he's not hard to find. He's literally just the breath away. And if this Christmas, everything is wonderful, great. If this Christmas is a bit of a struggle and God is holding you together, then know that God has you, that you are in the almighty hands of God and God's not gonna let you go. And just like the shepherds, whether you are nice and clean and nothing ever remotely bad ever comes out of your mouth or maybe if you've told a joke or two yourself you're invited because the good news of great joy is proclaimed to all people for unto us is born this night not just in the city of David but right here in Bluff Park right into your heart, right into your life, right where you are. Our Savior, who is Christ the Lord. There is a celebration. There is grace. There is hope. There is love. There is peace and there is joy. And you, you are invited. Merry Christmas in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Hello, my name is Kevin Payne and I'm the senior pastor here at Bluff Park United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining with us in our podcast of our worship celebration, the sermon this past week. I pray that you found it a blessing and that it enriched your life. If you are ever in our area and would like to join with us in person, we are located at 733 Valley Street here in Hoover, Alabama. Our service time is 10 a.m. and we would love to meet you. I pray you have a blessed week and hope to see you soon. Bye now.